Setting the proper case neck tension on your brass is a topic that's frequently up for debate. Is it two thousandths, three thousandths under loaded neck diameter? Some folks seem to get upset if you refer to it in this fashion, but it's certainly the way I most frequently hear it referenced. I know that since I put out my first video covering the Short Action Customs bushings, that a lot of you guys have reached out to me on what size bushing you should get for your application. Today we're going to cover 223 and probably cover some more calibers in the not so distant future. If you're happy with your current process and the results you're getting, by all means, stick with it. But I'm sure some of you are going to be interested to see what happens when you change these bushing sizes and see how it changes the performance. In the spirit of full disclosure, Short Action Customs did provide me their bushings for today's video. I purchased the Reading bushings myself, but they had no input on the content of today's video. I know that when you're trying to pick out the right bushings, a lot of folks don't want to buy five bushings to find the right one that's right for them. And so I'm going to give you all the dimensions from today's test so you can adjust them for your application if you so choose to do so. And even if you don't use bushing dies at all, stick around because I bet you're going to be surprised to find out what bushing combination resulted in this five shot group, which is my best to date out of this platform. You may wonder why you should even give these bushings a look in the first place. Two words, less, run out. I originally purchased my first bushings from Short Action Customs since they claimed this and I wanted to test it for myself. When I've used Reading Standard bushings in the past, my runout numbers have been inconsistent. I guess this hasn't been the case for some of you guys, but it's been the case for me. Some of the results will be okay, and then somehow I have random cases that are running five or more thousandths of runout, and today's testing is no exception. For today's example, we're just going to be using some range brass pickups that are all Hornady Frontier brass. It's not neck turned and it's certainly not premium. For our day to day, I'm just using a standard Redding S die. The short action customs bushings are basically the same outside diameter as Redding standard bushings, so yes, you can use these bushings in your standard Redding S die. If you have any questions on your specific combination, I'm sure the guys at Short Action Customs can answer that question for you. Now, for today's test, I was loading the 77 grain Sierra Match King behind 21.5 grains of AR Comp and CCI 41 primers. The cartridge oval length was 2.255 inches to ensure reliable magazine feeding. My test platform is an 18 inch White Oak Armoric SPR barrel chambered in 223 Wild. So let's start talking dimensions. Bring out your pen and paper if you're interested. Now I'm measuring everything I can with my digital micrometers as it's always nice to have a couple extra digits of precision if possible. You may be able to measure everything you want with just a nice set of calipers that hopefully you already have on your reloading bench. This particular lot of the Sierra Match Kings is pretty consistent. The projectile diameter is 0.2244 inches on the bearing surface. For measuring the brass thickness, I'm using some RCBS ball micrometers, but I just ordered a set of the digital ones from eye gauging to give them a try, since photographing the measurements of this is very difficult, and at this point, they're basically the same price. The thickness variation in the necks of these cases is a little over a thousandth of an inch, which is quite a bit for good brass, but like I said, we're using range pickups. Basically, we're looking at an average value somewhere between 11 and 12 thousandths as an average value. Measuring a seated round, the outside diameter is basically 247 thousandths. And if you subtract the 0.2244 inches of the projectile, divide that in half, and you're going to get an average neck thickness of 11.3 thousandths. So if you can accurately measure the loaded round diameter, and you know the projectile diameter you're using, you may be able to do without some of these fancy tools. But what fun would that be? I'll put links to some of these tools in the description box below since I know somebody will ask, but some of them you probably can do without. The smallest diameter bushing you can get from either company at this point is a 0.243 inch diameter bushing, and I plan to start the smallest possible and test until I literally had no neck tension at all. And doing this is going to give us our first clue of how these bushings are different. The Reading bushing sizes I tested were starting at the smallest of 243, and we stopped getting neck tension essentially after the 0.248 bushing, so the 0.249 bushing gave us no neck tension at all. Now remember, our loaded round measured out at 0.247 inches. Fired brass from this chamber is coming out at 0.253 inches. With our short action customs bushings, we start out at the same 0.243 inch bushing, but we're testing only out to 0.246 inches. While the 0.247 inch bushing could hold the projectile, I could change the cartridge oral length with my fingers. So I figured that was a little too low to test and I didn't sample that option. For today's test, we're only doing five samples at each value. Now keep in mind this is a sample data set from a video I plan on releasing in the future where I test 17 different options, so subscribe if you want to check that out. But when we talk about sample count today, there are more options for Reading simply because there were more sizes that could be tested. The first thing we'll look at in our evaluation is the runout results. I'm sure that some of you would like to watch the concentricity of all 50 cases, but most won't. So the value in today's chart are in total indicator runout. The concentricity values from the short action customs bushings are consistently low, and the Reading values can be low 
but 9 out of the 30 cases are 3 thousandths or more of total indicator runout, while the short action customs are all 2 thousandths or less. If you're not familiar, the short action customs bushings start the sizing process a little different further down the neck and therefore don't size quite as much of the neck and you're going to see this in the force graphs. But it no surprise to me the average value of total indicator runout across all of our samples, short action customs is pretty much the lowest. But let's look to see how they differ in seeding force. Now I'm going to show you guys some graphs from my amp press. I don't know a better way of visually demonstrating the differences in these bushings than this. These charts show force in pounds over distance in inches. The total seating distance is around 370 thousandths from when the projectile starts to seat to where they finish the seating process. I could easily go way deep into how these profiles change based on the seating process, but I'm going to save that for the other video. Today, let's just see how they differ from one another. The seating force charts today are averaged from five individual samples and averaging them together to compare one bushing size to another. Now, if you're already using a Redding bushing and you have your neck tension figured out, but you want to give one of these a try, I would think about going one thousandths under your current neck diameter you're using. If you're starting from scratch, the general guidance that I've heard is starting either two or three thousandths under the diameter of your loaded round. Remembering that our loaded round diameter is 0.247 inches, so in Redding, I would go two thousandths under that neck diameter, so that's going to give us a bushing size of 0.245 inches. And if you were going to go the short action customs bushing and using that same comparison, I would go with a 0.244 inch diameter. But does it even matter? Here's a look at just the Redding bushings. If you were to put these in order by which bushing gave the most peak force for Redding, it would be 243, 245, 246, then the 244, a 247, then 248. But instead, if you wanted to put them in order of the average seating force after the projectile is past the next shoulder junction, and then put them in order from the most force to the least, it would start out at 246, then 245, 243 and 247 are about tied, and then it's 244 and then 248. Would you have ever thought it could be that far out of order? Now let's look at the short action custom bushing results. Now this chart, no matter if you sort by peak force or by force after seating force is completed, they go in order, 243 down to 246. And again, 247 was so low that I could move it with my fingers. Now I'm not saying that one graph outperforms another graph. We're not reloading for graphs, we're reloading for groups. Just for a fun comparison, I'll put all the graphs on the same chart it does get a little busy. You can see that the 243 bushing from Short Action Customs is the only one that gets even close to some of the other values that most of the Redding bushings seem to acquire. But do these neck tension changes affect our load? There's nothing magical about the load we're testing today. It's not tuned for cartridge over length, and I didn't have any specific accuracy goals in mind. And frankly, we were just testing 17 different combinations all at the same time. During today's testing, I was certainly going for the best groups I possibly could, but I'm still making changes to my setup, so I'm sure there's still some error in here induced by me. I do plan on looking at the results of today's test and deciding which ones make sense to evaluate further later. Now you guys always come up with some interesting questions, and I know if I've been asked before if there's a such thing as too much neck tension. If you look at the Redding 243, 244, as well as the Short Action Customs 243, all had group sizes from 0.9 to 1 MOA. In addition to that, the average velocity readings are also interesting. Looking at the Redding bushings from highest to lowest average velocity went 244, 245, 246, 247, then the 243, and then the 248. So in this case, neck tension didn't seem to follow average velocity. Looking at the short action customs bushings, the 243 was slightly out of family, but the other three options averaged 2606 and 2604. Looking at the extreme spread values, the Redding 244 had 29 was the lowest, and all the rest were in the 30s. Looking at the short action customs bushings, the 243, which again, we didn't like the group size on that, had the highest extreme spread at 34, and then we had 27, 26, and 25 respectively. Not great numbers, but again, remember, this is range brass. The average velocity in those values was just more consistent. My best group of any of the Redding bushings was the 0.245 inch bushing, and that would have been my advice before we looked at any of today's data. For short action customs bushings, go down one to 244, and that was a 0.52 MOA group. Pretty much identical. The 245 short action customs group opened up a little bit to 0.8. Some of that easily could have been me, but I'm sure everyone would be happy to decide what happened for themselves, even though they weren't there, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Clearly the group I was most surprised about today was the short action customs 246. Even though this is some pretty low neck tension, especially to run in a semi-auto, it's by far today's best group. But not just for the day that I've ever shot in this platform so far. Ordinarily, I wouldn't use that low of a neck tension value, but frankly, I just can't ignore a group that's that small. So you can guarantee I'm going to be testing it again. 
If you're trying to improve the concentricity of your reloads, give these short action customs bushings a look. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. If there's something missing from today's testing, let me know that in the comment section below. If you want to see what neck tension works best in 3.8 Winchester, check out this video right here. And until next week, stay safe in small groups.